Jean Koutou Katoa, um, Your Worship the Mayor, Council Star, our Community Board, and our visitors, No Mai Haidi Mai, um, to the Colbal, to the final Colbal Coromandel Community Board meeting. Um, welcome. Um, before we start, I'd like you all to please stand as we um, pay our respects of one minute silence to honour our Queen Elizabeth. Um, first of all, I'd like to call for apologies. Um, Peter, okay. Okay. And I'd like to re resolve that the Coromandel Community, Coral Coromandel Community Board receives the apology from Member Pritchard. Second that. Those in favour? Aye. Anyone against? Carry, thank you. So now we move on to public forum. Do we have anybody from a public forum? Not Having on. none, what we'll do is we'll move on to um, item 2.1 um, on our agenda. Um, oh, okay. Yes, I do too. So, um, are there any items? Not on the agenda. Okay. Any conflicts of interest? Okay, so I'd now like to um, confirm the minutes, uh, confirmation of the minutes so that the, the community board confirms the minutes of the CCCB meeting held on the 16th of August 2022. I'll move that. Oh, second. All those in favour? Right. Against carried. Okay, now we'll um, go on to um, 2.1. Oh, uh, out of, oh, so it's the um, 2.1 out of cycle budget um, request pottery, pottery lane west ceiling Coromandel Town. Ed, um, welcome. We're just going to do the next um, two items as we have no public forum this morning. And um, so um, we're starting off with um, the out of cycle budget request for Pottery Lane, West Ceiling, Romandol. So has everybody read the report? Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion that you want to? Um, well, um, through the chair, if we can take the report as read. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, basically, the situation is that we've done investigation into the uh, required works there. It exceeds the budget that we have available at the moment. Um, there are options to fund it through the community board, but our suggestion is that as this was originally footpath funding that had been reallocated, that we return that funding to the footpath and we put in a, a budget request for this as a separate project. So happy for any uh, comments or questions. Yeah. We are, we're really aware of the budget constraints yeah. around this and in a way it's um, 
it's become not a priority um, for us in terms of that there's in the scheme of things, there's very little use of that um, piece of pottery lane, um, and it's a huge amount of money to go for something that is um, used by a very small amount of people. Yeah, um, the money. Just, uh, just endorsing what um, Jim has said. Uh, it's not so much that it's not a priority; it's just that it has been um, put. We have been doing it further out here, and this is now a cycle request, which. You sometimes I have no problems with, you know, for mm -hmm. for matters that are a priority. But this is actually something that's already in the plan and can be dealt with it all yes. as it was scheduled. So rather than have a rating impact on something that the community doesn't see as a priority, we we'll just um, we proceed as we were. But that's uh... okay. Anybody so basically, yeah, no, carry on. So your resolution. Yeah. What would you like the resolution yep. to be? Yep. So, um, result, receives the outer cycle budget request pottery lane <coughs> ceiling coromandel report dated 9th of August 2022. Recommends that the council approve option one out of cycle. No, we're not going to no, do that. No, we're not going to no. do that. So, we just that we receive the report. What? Can I, can I just, through you, yes. Madam Chair, can I just ask, do you need a further direction on? Um, where to from there? Uh, the only other thing we uh, we need clarity on is where we put the the funding that was put forward for the. Yeah. Um, that was the footpath fund. That was the footpath fund. Yeah. Um, that was to scope the project and yes. and further it. Yes. Yeah, I don't see that we uh, have any problems with continuing down that um, track. But that was the resolution from a few meetings ago. Yes. And we'll just. Um, Proceed down that same track, leave the money there for the scoping, and um, yeah, just not do the works this year. And it, it's part of our long term plan, the further long term plan, that it could be incorporated into, into that. If, if I may make a suggestion through the chat, um, potentially we, we've done as much scoping as we, we need to at this time mm. to identify the costs and the scale of work for the long term plan submission. Mm. Um, what I would suggest is that you resolve to return any residual funding to the footpath budget. Absolutely. And that the uh, the work that we've done so far then forms a submission into the future long term plan. Actually, that's precisely. I didn't realise there's any surplus money left over, so if there is some, um, go back to the footpaths. Yeah, absolutely. Because they're short on our footpath budget too. Mm. So we've got that in the form of a resolution. I recommend any residual budget be returned to the footpath budget. I'm Correct. not sure if that's to the Crimean or Cold War footpath budget. Okay. And that a submission be made to the next LTP to include the ceiling works. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. That's right. But with all due respect, if I may, Madam Chair, you might like to reconsider the project at a later time subsequent to a subsequent a submission to the LTP because at that point you'll have you still have a rating impact you'll have a range of works you might want to prioritize it differently so I would suggest that it's a reconsideration of the prioritization of the project at the time of LTP to considerations so that you're not committing yourself to doing a um, to doing the project for the LTP next LP, LTP by way of submission, that you're actually reconsidering it in the context of all the works and yeah. budgets that might be available at the time. Yeah. So recommend any residual budget be returned to the Coromandel Coral Football Footpath budget and a submission be made to the next RTP to reconsider priority of the project. No, um, a more no, reconsideration no, no, no. of the prioritisation no, yeah. of the project yeah. at the time of the LTP review. Okay. Yeah, just we can yeah, that. through the chair. I wonder whether it would be better as three recommendations, just to separate um, the returning of the budget to the footpath. Mm. Um, it is a separate recommendation, yeah. as I understood it. Yeah. So that's three things. Yeah. What's the third? Receiving the report. Yeah. Um, returning the footpath budget. Yeah. And reconsideration oh, of the prior to stations through the LTP process. Yeah. Everything. 
just yeah, yeah. So would somebody like to move? I'll move it. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. And then the next one was oops, yeah, um, the next one was the um, footpath construction program. We might be able to do a few more meters. Wow. <laughs> or it was well, what's the saving? Yeah. We, we know. Okay. It's our budget so it's not really that no, wasn't our budget. Not, the footpath. Uh, no, no, not the that. footpath. Let's no, just no. consider this for a minute. We'll worry about that yeah. later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is your last meeting. <laughs> uh, just <laughs> control <laughs> details. So, does anyone have any questions? Has anybody read the report? Is, is, um, is there anything that you want to say before uh, we ask? No, I believe the, the report is uh, sent yep. itself. Okay. Any question? No. Um, um, I'd, I'd like to, um, if, if we just go through it, if we, if we can. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so the first one is the Long Bay Road. The second one is the Long, uh, so that's outside the Moana um, sea, Seafood Post. That's correct. Yes. And the second one is um, outside Sanford's. And I'm just, um, my question about that is, we don't know the future of Sanford's, what's happening there. There's been a lot of demolition going on there and all sorts of things. And so um, I, I would think like 51,000 is a lot for that. And we don't know what the future is of that. Is, do, you, do you know? Uh, I wasn't aware that there were changes being made to Sanford's. Um, what I would say though is the footpath would form a continuation oh. of a long-term plan for the, the footpath through to along that area. Mm. Um, any future development at Sanford's would have to take that into, into account. Um, the footpath would be on road reserve. Um, some of the changes would probably be limited to vehicle access or um, separate pedestrian access on the footpath. Mm. Uh, all due respect, Madam Chair, it's actually irrelevant what's happening in association with private property to a footpath but because that development, whatever it might be, um, will have to meet whatever requirements council has in mm. regard to accessing, as Ed said. Yeah. So it's irrelevant what, what actually is going to take place. I think what's really important is making sure that you've got a good, contiguous, safe walking access I think that's quite important if you've already got that scheduled in. Mm. Well, yes, um, I guess uh, uh, in the list of um, footpathing and, and the amount of money that we've we've got in this particular time, because this is for 23-24, uh, um, there's, um, it's not a used path, in, like people don't access that so much, but oh, um, it's debatable. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm just. That's just my thing. So, yeah. what are the people's thoughts on that particular one? I did say we have got a very limited budget, and some of that footpath work along um, the area of the wharf is very expensive. Given the small amount that we have to spend, I think that the uh, two options that have been presented in this report um, fit our needs at this point in time with the money yep. we have to spend <laughs> and I'm actually happy to move them um, as they are read in the in the paper. Yep, okay. So that's the um... option, it's uh, three suggested resolutions, so there's one and two in there and um, just move them as they, uh, as they read on page 14. <laughs> So the suggested, um, so the resolution is receives the Coromandel Volvo footpath construction program 22-23 report dated 3rd of September 2021. Approves option two as the preferred works of the 22-23 Coromandel footpath construction. Work program. 
which is the Pound Street and Hodaki and Road. Hodaki Road. So would somebody like to move that? Oh, I don't move that so I'd second, thank you, Jean. All those in favour? Aye. Oh, okay. carried. Right, I'm going to see if we all arrived. Okay. Okay. Just I'm just going to mask Sorry. Right. No, because it's a long time okay. in general, so it's deep so it's fine. So should Jamie say something? Or what? Yeah, Jane could just introduce the mayor and oh, yeah. so this is now we're going to move into the community services presentation and hand over to Sandra. Okay, so now we are going to move into the community service awards presentation and I'd like to hand over to your worship. Sandra, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so, where should we do this from? We thought here, if you don't mind. Okay. Something like this. I'm um, just going to do it over here. Oh, we could just move it this way a little bit, otherwise, we're fine. If you want to get photos, hurry over by that door. Okay. everybody. It's lovely to see you here this morning. This is a really special occasion. Now, this is this is a, an occasion that the Natural Facts Council has had in place for a number of years. But I wanted to um, really emphasise the importance of these community service awards. And, and so I've up the ante a little bit and introduced uh, a medal. And it's really important to recognise those people who have made a huge contribution to our communities. But as you all know, they're just, they are representing and being symbolic of the wider community effort that is so valuable to us all. And I have to say, I'm, I'm just so grateful for the energy and the passion and the drive of so many people that are dedicated to their communities. And that's why we recognise those who are leading that charge, and not always leading it, um, just getting stuck in and doing things for our communities. It is so important. I mean, as people say that in actual fact, if the volunteer sector stopped volunteering, our community would potentially collapse. And, and I have to say, I agree. We, we rely heavily on volunteer activity in our, all our communities, um, especially in remote rural areas. And uh, I can't thank all of you enough. Uh, and I'm so grateful to be able to recognise different individuals, but recognising the huge contribution of the wider community at the same time. Um, I'd just like to begin by acknowledging our board deputy chair, <laughs> Jan, and uh, the team, uh, sorry, the Coromandel teams, Coromandel Community Board. It's actually lovely to be with you. I've only come to the community board a few times, once or twice, but largely the reason is I haven't wanted to interfere with the very important work that they do because um, they do such a good job. I'd also like to recognise Frank. Frank, good to see you there. Uh, and staff, Bubbles, of course. She's really your um, man. <laughs> <laughs> she makes you my boss. Happy <laughs> 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 to go <laughs> Uh, but now, look, without more ado, um, I'd like to begin by inviting a very special person to come forward. And this person I have known for many years. And I didn't recognise her today, but <laughs> I'm going to say it's because she's wearing a mask. Mary Johnson. Incredibly grateful, Meryl, and um, the sun is sitting on the most lovely place. Hang on, don't run away. You come over here. <laughs> okay. I've known Meryl for absolutely years. Honestly, it's got to be about 45 years. Yeah. Sure. And I used, to, I used to work at the cold store. <laughs> All those years ago, Mary. And look, you've done, I've got here, I've got your bio. 
Meryl, out of 40 years of volunteer service for the Caldwell Patient Services. And Meryl has volunteered, volunteered his service to a number of local committees and initiatives in the Caldwell community, including the Caldwell Hall, Caldwell Rural Women, Caldwell School, and the establishment of the Caldwell Cemetery, War Memorial, and Rural Fire Service. You know, this is so special for being able to give you an award today, Meryl, and I'm going to first give you the, this is the hang on the wall one, but this is the one that I really like. And um, this is just, well, this is a bit bad thing. This is this is so incredibly special because the connection um with all the things that Meryl have done and my past involvement with Colville um and the fact that you know with the family etc it's just been huge. So I'm incredibly proud to be able to give you this very special services award, Meryl. Meryl Johnson. Thank you, Meryl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also worked at the Cold Store for many years. Yeah, I worked alongside her. That's just just amazing. Uh, she's been such a stalwart of the community. Hmm. As, as many of you are, and, and I am doing so, I now recognise and invite the next person to come forward, who's been also an incredible stalwart of the community and probably remembers Felix, so he can tell me if he does. Robert Hale. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Bob. I'm very proud to be able to give you a community services award. And I'll pop this thing into your neck. And do you remember Felix? Yes. Now I I understand he used to run from Cole to Coromandel to play rugby. Well, that's probably before my day, but <laughs> <laughs> and I'd just like to thank you, Bob, for your outstanding service as well. Um I and, and it's largely been with the Coromandel rugby football in Swartzland. And um, you've held positions of president, committee member, and coach, supporting both senior and junior rugby. And during your time as president of the club, you've led many improvements to the facilities and field and just inspired so many. And so we're incredibly grateful for your passion and dedication. Thank you so much. And that's made such a big difference. Thank you. I'd just like to um, thank you. This is just a big shock to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to thank the boys at there for nominating me and we go on to the year. I'm just overwhelmed. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, I'd like to award the next community service medal to Peter Pritchard for his or his services as, as the Command of Colville Community Board Chair, but unfortunately he's unable to be with us today, so I'm 
asking John to accept this on his behalf would be so kind. And John, you know how much Peter's, Peter's love doing the job he's done. Um, and but now he's retired, isn't he? He is, he is, and um, I've often gone to council, I've gone to council on a number of occasions, and Sandra will verify this, and spoken very highly of this community board because it functions so smoothly, it represents the community just perfectly, and a lot of that comes down to leadership, and Peter has given great leadership in this community as a community board chair for a number of years. Um, he's going to be difficult to replace. Um, I guess we'll all know because it's going to be after the elections, but Peter will be missed. He put a long time in this community. So thank you, Sandra, on Peter's behalf. Thank you, John. Appreciate you accepting it. And I'd now like to invite Jan Autumn <laughs> to accept a community services award. Because it's, you know, it's um, takes a lot to put your hand up and step forward and represent your community. And, and be dedicated in doing that. Takes a lot of time and effort, uh, and it can be a bit in, you know, anxious at times. So, Jan, if you'd like to come forward and please accept this, and I'll just read a few words out. Here we go. So, um, be selected in 2016 and again in 2019 and held deputy chair position during both terms. Jan, you'll be remembered for your unwavering commitment to the heritage values of the town centre, apart from all of the um, other work that you've done along the way and the support that you've given to the rest of your fellow members uh, and worked so diligently with them to have final outcomes which have been for the betterment of the community. And we really appreciate and thank you for all your many years of service and not just as a community board member, but also as a very dedicated and passionate um, Member of the community. So, oh, yeah, maybe. Thank you so much for all your dedicated service. Yeah. Here you go. Now, I think. Um, I think that just about wraps it up. We're all going to have a nice cup of tea and have a little corner on the chat, a bit of a hug. And, and, and just really enjoy each other's company. And thank you so much, everybody. So, in order to make a cut off, thank you. Please join us. Move into 2.3 Coromandel Town Bypass Update. Um, Ed, do you want to say anything? Um, yes. If I may, um, mm -hmm. uh, if I can take the report as read. Um, brief summary is that we've undertaken the consultation uh, that was requested. Um, this has shown that the majority of respondents from the community were against the bypass in its current form. Um, the reasons for that are varied, but are the, the general reasons are shown in uh, Appendix A to uh, a sort of attachment day rather to the report. Um, there does appear to be a, a great deal of concern about the movement of the Town Rugby Club, um, but both from the people who were against the uh, the proposal and also for those who were for the proposal. Um, the other key thing that we've identified from the respondents is that many people feel um, that the bypass could actually bring benefits to the community that are not realised solely in the movement of traffic. Um, as a result of this, uh, at the moment, um, we were in a situation where with the current bypass proposal, um, we staff have to recommend that it's deferred in favour of a spatial plan we do recognise that there is still value to the proposal, but that we also recognise it has the potential to bring a much bigger benefit to the community than is possibly identified purely for the traffic and purely for the access to town. But that we've not been able, as part of our studies so far, 
to fully explore that. Can I just ask a question here, Ed, if I may? Um, what's the, um, the, the designations that are currently on the, the land? Um, what, what's the link or what, if, if, you know, if we were to delay it and to, you know, put it right out, where does that put the designations? Uh, as far as I'm aware, it hasn't changed the designation at all. Okay. There's nothing that would expire. It no. doesn't expire. No. Okay. All right. No, I just wanted to clarify that. Yep. Okay. Um, has anybody? Yeah, just if I can. Um, Ed, I, I hear what you're saying about spatial plans. Spatial plans are great. They really are. But it's my understanding that if we were to go down that route, um, staff would not be able to work on a spatial plan for quite some time because they're already under a fairly heavy workload. And I've seen the one in Thames take a number of years to sort of get that to fruition. And um, at huge cost too, at huge cost. You probably do the bypass pretty much for the cost of the spatial plan, I'd imagine. So I have some real concerns about that. And the other thing is, as far as spatial planning in this town goes, we've already spent a lot of time planning in this town. We planned the industrial area that's out on Tiki Road, where that was going to go. We know there's going to be a subdivision off Pongapaya Road. Things are already uh, falling into place around this town, and there's been a lot of work done by this community board as far as just general planning around the area already goes. In other words, a spatial plan, but not a formal one. Um, so I have some real concerns about doing that. It would in actual fact kill the bypass um, uh, probably in my lifetime. It would be many, many years before you even look at that. Now, we have a number of people that are objecting to um, the bypass, um, but I understand the numbers weren't too different. They were just 60-40 uh, or something like that. Well, roughly, yeah, 60-40. And I would expect the number of objections to be uh, quite strong this time from those people that were affected. In the Green Hills area that are not working with broken arms, they would have an interest and they'd certainly get involved. So I think that's actually quite a good result for Coromandel Town if it's split 60-40. The hoo-ha over the Main Street upgrade and the roundabout there was way more diverse, you know. Um, in actual fact now, it's the best thing since sliced bread. So I'm not going to let the fact that 60% at this stage are saying no, 40% yes, um, carry too much weight with me. I campaigned a little bit on my... Um, Meet the candidates about the bypass. Was greeted with uh, quite a good response from the audience on that. So I do believe the town's more than ready for it. The thing is, if we don't start it, if we delay it, at the moment the town will survive without the bypass. There's no two ways about it. We're coping; it'll be fine. But you come back in 30 years' time, and that's what we're, that's where we should be looking. 30 to 40 years out. If that bypass is not done, we'll have major issues, and people will be saying we should have had a bypass here years ago. Because it's we shouldn't be waiting until the actual crisis comes. We should be planning, and I believe the bypass is planning for that um, out in the future. So I am still in favour of, of um, progressing. I'm not in favour of a spatial plan because I believe this community has done a lot of work already as far as planning for this town goes. Um, and I'm looking very closely at option two. I think it wasn't here as being the uh, as being the way we should go. Uh, which is not the like staff recommendation. So those, those are my thoughts, guys. Um, quite a crucial meeting today because if we go down and take option three, there's nothing going to happen. Oh, and the rugby club too, by the way. Mm. Had a meeting with them a little early the other night. It's rugby, it was with the touch team, but rugby club representatives were there. And um, some of those people you and I have met with on previous occasions. And they are adamant that they want that rugby club, the ones that were there at that meeting, uh, to proceed out on the sports fields that we've allocated. So quite a, quite a turnaround, quite positive about that. Right. Okay. For what it's worth. So um, what are your thoughts and my thoughts, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Maybe, um, can I just add something to please. that, what John is saying in support of... Um, regarding the spatial um, plan um, and not doing it. Um, I've brought with me the majority of the stuff that I've been working on way before I was even on the community board. And part of that is the street state design and the feasibility um, for the bypass, the community plan, 
the um, um, from 2010 um, plus the community plan 2020. And all of them say um, that what they don't, one of the things they want um, not to occur is the heavy traffic stopped going through our town because the future of our town is that we want to keep it more and more low um, density mm. traffic wise yeah. and keep it safe and make it more pedestrian safe. And um, and that's what we've been working on with the streetscape. Oh. Um, the business case that was done um, in 2017, all of them um, say that, that that's almost like the foundation yes. of why we want to do that and why it was for. So, and Green Hills um, accordingly was designed mm. to accommodate mm. that, that. And every piece, every property that was sold in there, and I know because I was a real estate agent at one stage, um, had a um, was part of on their titles that, that was going to be for a highway. So, in a way, the people, some of the people who are objecting, and I've read those objections, are people who live there, and I understand that, and they don't, and why they don't want it, but it was there and it was on their title when they purchased it. So, in that respect, because we've done so much work, so much work has already been done, been done to do the spatial plan, is um, almost like we've already done it. We're a small yes. town. Um, you know, to hold it up for that reason um, would be a real pity, like Dawn says. Um, you know, if it's not going to be in his lifetime, then it's definitely not going to be in his lifetime. <laughs> so, um, so I just want to support that's 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 my opinion so, on, on that. And, um, I'm wondering if Jane and Kim would like to. Yeah, I, I back John as well, I think. But, um, we don't need a, a, a separate spatial plan done. We've done all that homework already over the years for many years. Um, and the bypass, I think, is a great idea. We've been pushing for it for many, many years. And we've actually got it to a stage now where we can see plans and, and things. I, I don't want it to wait. It's got to keep you rolling. No, you're right, I agree with what John's saying also. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks, that's great support from the community board and I really appreciate it. Um, so it has been identified here as a number one priority for the community board. The last paragraph on option two, I see there's a, um, there's some reasons why, um, yeah, the, the good reasons. But listen, I, the, 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 um, the thing that also concerns me, I didn't mention before, is the landowners. They have been held out, held on a piece of string dangling for a long, long time. And I'm actually really aware of that. You know, I really want some certainty from them. That, uh, that's why I want this community board of affairs to show the vision to progressively the bypass where we discussed. And as far as costs go, I know it's going to be bloody expensive. Can you edit that? And um, I know it's going to cost a dollar or two, but we don't have to do it all in one head. I'd be happy with a staged, mm -hmm. a really, really staged approach to this. Um, the first part being the bridge, given that connectivity to town, and the rest can flow, you know, further down the track. Yes. It's just doing that first stage would be just awesome and and. The costs would be probably within the reach of the community. Right. If I may through through the chat, yep. um, some comments on what's been raised so far. Please. Um, the staff do recognise the value to the bypass. Yeah. Um, it will provide benefits to uh, Coromandel Town. And a lot of those benefits, as I said earlier, are not fully realised in, in the report that we produce or the information we've produced so far. On spatial planning, this will occur. It, it will be a change to the resource management data. Yes, it will come in the future. So all the information that's available now will occur at some will be taken into a spatial plan at some time in the future. Yes. Um, if the community board wishes to proceed with the bypass in advance of the spatial plan, fully entitled to do that. Um, the biggest risk 
that I can see from the current proposal is the movement of the rugby club. There is, as mentioned in the report, there is a high public perception that this is a historic site for the town and it should remain in its current location. Um, that aside, there is potential for a new rugby club to be built in the new pitch. Uh, the reason why the rugby club is being proposed to be moved is because of the original brief uh, to staff that we you wholly utilise publicly available land mm. to try and reduce costs. Mm. That has identified that the rugby club will require to be moved, which will increase costs. There is an option to move the bypass into the land to the east of the new Yes. That would reduce the need to move the bypass. Sorry, move the rugby club. Yep. That could be undertaken if we can uh, do studies to actually see what can be, how far we need to move. I've estimated seven to ten metres at this moment in time, which would move it into uh, development land at that, in that area. But the land take there would be less than if we actually utilise the existing bypass route. So there's a new mm, benefit mm. to development. As in the development. designation of yes. Thank you. The only issue there is that the property that is currently um, on site mm. would either be too close to bypass or would need to be demolished or moved. Mm. Now, that is something that we've not discussed with the landowner at this time. No. Um, but if, if the bypass were to be moved, that has potential not only to reduce the um, cost of the bypass by removing the need to move the rugby club at this time, but also mean that we can actually get the bypass constructed potentially as part of the development of that land. Yeah, that's, um, that's brilliant. And, um, when, I, when we first came up with the idea of putting the bypass in the new location, um, the fact that we didn't have to purchase land uh, was a factor, mm. but it wasn't the biggest factor. Mm. The biggest factor for me was the um, the, the flow through that it gave the town, and I use that word connectivity in in all directions. So um, the reasons you, the, the suggestions you've just made about moving it to a little to the left, those are discussions that I would um, imagine would have to have with the landowner, and um, if we were to stay as bypass, as I said a, a few minutes ago. That could be um, a number of years out in the future. Mm. We've got time up our sleeve to actually um, do that. I really want to progress. I want to see that desert. I want to see that as a commitment, well, commitment by commitment by council that it's going to go there and that designation removed from that land um, where it currently is. So yeah, I, I love the idea. I love the idea. It, it, it's. I wish I thought of it actually earlier, um, moving it slightly to the left, but. It does open up another little thing we've got to deal with. It does, yeah. But it, it actually, it means the rugby club grounds are left more or less intact. You end up with more green area out where the green area is always supposed to be. Um, it's a good idea. I love also it. So another option that the board's exploring. I, and we, I need to, we need to explore yeah. it. Oh. Absolutely. So what do we do? It has that legal uh, plan that we got done uh, um, six months, eight months ago. Does it? Need, can it still be used and just tweaked a little bit? The work? plan can be um, adjusted. It's fairly simple to move the, the alignment of the, the road. Mm. Um, the roundabout at um, and the bridge would need to be moved, but because we're moving it to the east, that actually makes the alignment of the roundabout and the bridge better. Does it? It also moves the connector row. Um, a, a bit further away from uh, the McMinns, mm. one of the main people who are, are affected by this, mm. it will still cause them issues, but it will move it marginally away. Mm. Uh, the other potential benefit is where the bypass joins off to State Highway 25. Yep. It gives a better alignment to the potential for development to the south of State Highway 25. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, um, what do you reckon, 
across the city to tweak those plans we've already got down to come back and show, show um, the community I'll board. I have to come back to you with a specific figure. Yeah. That feeling would be 20,000 maximum. Yeah. I, I think I think that's cheap. Uh, if we get a better result at the end of it for everybody, I think that's that's money well invested. So um, yeah, a bit more, but you'd, I think you'd get the buy-in with that that we need. Yeah. Um, well, it certainly satisfy the rugby club, wouldn't it? Yeah, and and it's a bit of mitigation for Elf and Wynn, um as well. I mean, as you say, it's not, but maybe it, it can be more sensitively planted. I mean, there's things that can be done around that. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the resolution? If it didn't change. Uh, the, uh, was it, rather than, I think the recommendation was that we, the recommendation was that we go for our option three. Does, does the board currently still have some remaining budget? Um, there is remaining budget, but not sufficient. Not sufficient for to do the core redesign. No, no, that was a little more that. But just to um, work from the roundabout, well, the bridge would have to be relocated too a little bit. The bridge would have to be realigned. Not the whole thing, yeah. Um, but it would have to be realigned. The reason for that is the bridge is directly linked to the position of the roundabout because of the the proximity, proximity of the, the two um, the two items, should we say. Yeah. Um, so if we do it, the actual roundabout design is fairly well established. That just needs to be moved, and the um, the approach legs realigned. The bridge is the thing. Once we've got that, is determined how far we can move the um, the bypass alignment away from the rugby club to preserve the pitch, and also if you like the spectator area to the side. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. The area. So it's we, it's it, that that's it's that would be our second resolution because we would rather than the one that we've got now, or well, we just adjust the second resolution to mm. incorporate. If, if you wish to go down the line of keeping the bypass mm. um, project away from the spatial plan, yeah. Uh, my recommendation would be that you delete the current second resolution okay. yep. and uh, request staff to carry out an investigation into the redesign Realign. bypass on an alignment that minimises the effect on the rugby club and minimises land take to the adjacent properties as well. Thank okay. Sounds good. Do I have to put in all about the rugby club? No, it's just it's about the design, isn't it? Or so I've got request staff to investigate the realignment of the proposed by law, uh, bypass realignment. Yeah. Maybe or maybe we need investigate to investigate an, an alternative alignment. Yeah, to accommodate. To accommodate, because it may be that the board comes back to this one and says, well, no, this was the best one. Do you know what I mean? Or are you just completely discounting the current? No, we shouldn't just get them down. Well. No. So perhaps it could be just not investigate an alternative alignment to yes. be presented mm. back to the next boards. Yes, I because couldn't guarantee it would be the next. No, I'm no, 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 just in terms of future meeting. Yeah, so future meeting. So this resolution is merely to point out the direction the board wishes staff to take. Yes. At what stage would the board need to make a resolution in terms of? Finding some funding to pay for the new uh, design work. I would need to discuss that with WSP, who did the original design. I know that they've still got the, the model. It shouldn't be expensive to do that. So I think that's the bit that I was indicating that really would need to come back to the board's next meeting so that they can approve or have some options as to how they're going to fund. The new piece of work because yes. they don't currently have an existing budget that to correct. make that. So I wasn't asking no. about the whole realignment to no. come through, just that you investigate the various options of how that could be funded. Yeah, and present that back. should that be a separate resolution about budgeting? If, if I may, no, just leave it at the investigating. Okay. If I may make a suggestion, um, 
the the board has um, the board, board's view is the bypass project should proceed. Great. Yeah. Um, there are other options that we have for the bypass alignment that we have not fully explored at this time. Um, if the board wishes to instruct staff to to undertake those, um, what we can do is investigate the potential for alternate alignments and report back to the board on the potential cost for those design changes. Yeah, yeah. thank that's you. That, that's yeah. Now, that's, it. It. that's where we were going. That now is it. Do we need to put in there in uh, that it's in response to the feedback we've heard on the submissions? Mm. And because I, I think it's really good to get yeah. it in there that we have responded. We've thought about it. We've, we've taken it into account. And I think it's really good to have it on record that we do that so that would would that be at the front of or at the beginning like in response to the submissions that could be the Coromandel Coral Community Board resolved that in response to the submissions received to the initial feedback they've requested staff to investigate alternate alignment options but can the that. board actually instruct staff they can't oh, well, whatever you want to no. ask staff request staff so, so are you wanting more Okay, so I've got here recommends to council staff <clears throat> investigate an alternative alignment of the proposed bylaw and cost. Sorry, say bylaw. Um, and costs. Are we, we're not looking at costs. No, and, and they're we? not recommending to council either. No. They're, they're now deciding that based on the feedback, they want further investigation done. So that doesn't need to go to council okay. to be approved. Okay. We get the gist and we can work on the staff day. investigate in an alternative alignment of the proposed bypass yeah. and As, uh, what provide I, a report back. A report back on the costs for uh, redesign. Yeah, and just leave it at that. Yeah. yeah. We can play with the words. We get the meaning. That's great, Ed. Um, yeah. Does that get in there though? We need want to say it, it, this is kind of about due to the response. The start of that starts off with in yeah. response in to response to feedback yeah. received. Yep. The board requests the staff. Um, and you just need to move in. Yes, I will. But I'll, 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 I want it read if we can just read it out again once it's complete. So that, that is that resolution number two. It'll no, number two. two. Number two. It'll be number two. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. it's all. Um, so uh, the the community board receives the Coromandel Town Bypass Progress Update Report dated twenty third of August twenty twenty two. It's number one. Number two. In response to feedback received, the Coromandel Coble Community Board requests staff investigate an alternative alignment of the proposed site path and report back on costs for the design to a future meeting. Mm -hmm. Report back on costs? Oh, yeah, yeah okay. no, you do, because the board will yeah, need to course. find out how yeah. they're going to fund that work okay. once they know how much it's cost. Yeah, and do we have a third one to remove um, Two, number two? Do we no, need don't. We don't need that's to. That's only a recommendation to you. Okay. This yep. is what okay. counts. All right, that's it. Yep. Okay. So I'd like a mover for that. I'll move that. That's John. Okay. And the second. All those in favour? No. Aye. Carried. Oh, Thanks, guys. Small, small steps here. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. It's a really good, excellent report. Good outcome. Yeah, I can see an opportunity to use maybe even. Yeah. Right. Which, uh, now we have Andrew Bowden online for the next item. Page 31. Good morning. Hello, Andrew. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, John. Welcome. Any questions? Do we want to go do, so people do we want to go through have you looked through and marked anything that you want to particularly discuss um, or do you want to go through it one one at a time 
What's the preference? The heavy. I've read through it and made some markings on various ones. And then just go for it, Jan. Okay. Um, um, oh, well, we've already talked about the ceiling. Um, so the Pottery Lane West ceiling thing. So you've got that down for 30th of June. Uh, 2023 and has been on track with with the conversation that we had this morning, the discussion we had this morning, that um, is now changing. Yeah. Um. Um, Takuma Road. Uh, we have a follow up meeting with Waka Kotahi on. Thursday morning this week to see if we can resolve the geotechnical issues that they have with our design. Uh, we have Pinnacle Civil, we have HD Geo, uh, our geotechnical engineer, and we also have a peer reviewer <coughs> who's a geotechnical engineer as part of that uh, meeting. So. Um, I am hopeful uh, that we can resolve the geotechnical issues that Waka Kotahi have with our design at the moment. If we don't get a favourable response, despite having carried out additional geotechnical testing work, um, uh, we will come up with a plan B. Mm -hmm. um, it is extremely frustrating at uh, the time that uh, Waka Kotahi take in reviewing what we're doing, and um, it is not, um, yeah, it's, it's very frustrating. Uh, we've had a very good consultation with uh, Nati Fananga. Uh, we're waiting for their updated cultural impact assessment uh, from Mike Baker uh, and um, our relationship with EWE could not be any better. Uh, we've spent a lot of time uh, consulting with EWE to understand their um, um, issues and um, that's gone very well. So the only um, problem at the moment is sorting out Waka Kotahi that um, yeah it's too technical for this meeting um, in my, <laughs> in my opinion and I'm, not, and I'm not I'm not trying to insult the board um, but no. it is um, it is quite technical and um, revolves around with their uh, Principal geotechnical engineer. Yeah. Is, is there any sort of design work done on that intersection at all, Andrew? Have, have you got any design work? Uh, there's been, John, through the chair, there's been an extensive amount of design work completed <laughs> by Pinnacle Civil. Um, and um, uh, the documentation has been shared with EWI who have made some slight uh, requested tweaks to the design, which are of no real consequence, but it's the underlying issues around the a geotechnical performance of the ground, both uh, on under the state highway and adjacent to it. Um, and um, some of the um design assumptions that hdgo who are geotechnical engineers have made uh, at the moment do not align fully with um waka kotahi's view um, there is uh, some risk of liquefaction in the area should there be some um, earthquake or something similar uh, in the future. And uh, the performance of the ground conditions um, are um, somewhat 
um, debatable uh, from both parties, and therein lies the challenges that we face at the moment. So, uh, John, um, uh, we have 950,400 in the budget for this year, and approximately <laughs> 2 million in the budget for next year for this project. And um, if we finish it by next year, uh, we'll be doing very well indeed. Uh, there is some um, preloading to do on the areas that um, uh, are subject to liquefaction, but we can't start that until we've got Waka Kotahi's um, sign off uh, of the design parameters for the um, for the intersection. Um, to compound this, I understand, and it's noted in the uh, action schedule that the I think it is the action schedule. The Sugarloaf development project is um, uh, current, and um, the fast track consent. I'm told, although I'm not involved in this project, I'm told is um, is awaiting comments from the EPA. Yeah, um, that's, all, that's all on hand, Andrew, and we're fine with that. And the intersection won't actually hinder in any way um, the development of Ricky Tahi. It'll no, 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 no. It'll, no proceed, but, um, it'll proceed despite the intersection. But yeah. yeah. So um, I am hopeful, John, through the chair, that this time next month I'll be able to confirm that we've got across the line with Waka Kotai and we are proceeding with um, preparing the area for some sort of uh, preloading uh, as and when we can. Thanks, Andrew. I have every confidence in you. Does that, um, <laughs> Andrew, does that affect the um, landowners in any way? Once you get that permission, does that make it easier to go ahead with the landowners, landowners to start? We can, that's a very, very good question. Um, we can only proceed with the Moore family and our negotiations with them once we have Waka Kotai on board, Jan. Yeah. Mm. So um, we cannot, um, we cannot and will not no. push the discussions with the Moore family uh, until that happens. And um, therein lies another challenge. But I'd rather not um, focus on that now. Mm. Our main focus is getting Waka Kotai to accept the design parameters for the uh, construction work and the land uh, on board. And then we'll face our next challenge, which will um, be uh, negotiations and uh, land purchase um for the Moore family and that is another uh, challenge that we have to face mm. nothing is more important across the district from my perspective than resolving the issues that we face at the moment with the uh, worker Kotai. nothing is more important mm. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Does anybody else have any questions? No, I'm fine. Andrew? No. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I just had one. Oh, well, I had another one. Does it, I don't know if anybody else has. Um, the Wayuna Bay uh, Protection Ring, I presume that's the one that's in the train now. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm wondering um, the, the, what's being budgeted for it. Is, is, is that enough? Is that enough to do what needs to be done? It will be. Um, I, I understand, uh, Jan, that it's sufficient for the timber wall at the moment, but only that. So um, that is what, um, yeah. Can we get, um, can we approach WRC for money to contribute towards that? Just asking. Um, 
We can try. <laughs> well, I'm just I'm just wondering if you can, because while they're doing the job, it would be really good to see it completed fully. Um, and because it's about sustain sustainability um, with that particular, you know, it's been ongoing for such a long time. And um, um, I so will. Um, I'll speak to Corey Simpson, Jan, of uh, and ask him um, if there's a way of um, getting some funding from WRC. But um, I think I know what the answer will be at the well, moment. We can only try, I guess. Um, but and, uh, and, yeah, if we don't try, we won't find out. Yeah. So. Um, that's it's an action. action time, so it's probably a good time to um, speak yeah, to in the um, in the minutes. Can that be an action for me? Yes, and sir. I will I will come back to you. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone else have any more no, any questions? No. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. All the best. It's been great working with you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank We've you. done two projects together. Thank you. That was my head. So we we were wanting to, although the um, grants are the next one on our agenda, but we're going to actually not have the Oh, I beg you, pardon, we do too. Um, okay, I'd like to move, or I'd like somebody to move that we receive Andrew's report. I'll move that. And second. I'll second. Thank you, Kim. All those in favour? Right. None against? Carried. Thank you. Right. So you're now going to move to, are you going to do the members' reports now? Yes. And we will have to do the We'll get the members' reports. Um, does somebody want to start? Yeah, I can. Um, not lots happening for us. Um, we had um, a Haraki House walk around meeting, which I attended, um, to look at the building and its state of repair, which we all, I think, agree. Disrepair. A disrepair, yes, needs quite a bit of work. So hopefully that is in the pipeline in the future. It's currently being worked on by the builder Wonderful. after how he's going to do all the different pieces. So yes, it's definitely being asked to be done. Great. Wonderful. Um, and then on the 2nd of September, um, we had the Harriet House Management AGM um, that both Jan and I attended. And, that I resigned from. And Jan <laughs> resigned from, unfortunately for us. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that was really good. Um, but apart from that, that's sort of really, really where I've been at, apart from um, just out meeting and greeting, really. No. 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 Okay. Um, yes, so I resigned from that um, committee because of the, um, I was doing it on the behalf of the board. Yeah, and so... I've now resigned. They tried to write me in to be the hair person. Ah, uh, good idea. We tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I also um, want to um, table a letter as part of my report from um, Sonia Wittihana. Um All the members have already received it. The, the members have already received it, so I'm just tabling that report. Um, also, I've received an email from Lynn Salt. Um, I'll just read it out. Uh, Maureen and Jan, I had hoped to get to the meeting today, but after a frantically busy weekend, I've come down with a heavy sinus cold. I'll have to miss it, but just wanted to say thanks for everything, and I hope the last one goes well. Please give my best wishes to all the team with sincere thanks for the service you have all given over the last three years. Lynn Salt. Okay. And regarding my report, let's not cry. I just want this is my last board meeting, and um, 
And, and I really want to acknowledge everybody that's in the team of, um, of, this, of this board. It's just been amazing. It's been an absolute privilege to be on this board. I haven't always been happy, as you know, and I've moaned and groaned a few <laughs> times. And um, But I've always felt that we have been a team. We've supported each other. And Bubbles, I just really want to acknowledge you um, as I feel like that you're the anchor for this team. You you bring you have so much knowledge. You've always been fair and reasonable and slapped me on the hand when I've been a bit naughty. But you've only ever done that, you know, you've done that um, kindly. You've done it and um and so I just you bring so much to the board. You are the board really, you're the you you're our I consider you to be our leader, and um, <laughs> but I don't know because I don't know how to say how much you know. I just want to acknowledge you and what your contribution means um, to this board. You keep us safe. Um, yeah, you keep us within integrity of of what we're here for, and um, you, you just do it so well and kindly and with araha. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you. That's very good. Yeah. Hmm. So that's my report. Well said, Jan. A good final report. Mm. Mm. Setting me up a little bit for the next board. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's my last day. Because <laughs> yeah. I can do what I like. <laughs> uh. oh. Okay, so now um, we are going to um, do our community board grant. We're going to receive the members' reports. We're going to receive the members' reports. <laughs> talk back, get out of here. <laughs> Don't you, you can do what you like, Jen. <laughs> um, so I'd like to um, I'll move that we receive the um, members' reports. Um, second draft. I'll second. Jean, second. Jean. All those in favour? Aye. Anyone against? Harold. Thank you. Is that grants now? Now yes. we'll move into the community the board. Fun stuff. Grants. Yeah. This is this is the great stuff. That um the feel good stuff. This is it. And it's a lovely way to actually complete our meeting. I've always enjoyed doing these um, grants. I just wish mm. we had more money. Yeah. More money. To give it to everyone, but it is limited. Right, even though I come to the family's educators, excuse my whiteboard work. We love it. That's my papers. Right, Jane, you all know the drill. <laughs> you all done your homework. Yep. Okay, Helena's going to keep an eye on us because I'm so grateful that behind the scenes, Helena really has done most of the work of pulling this together. So, remember how to do this. We've all done our homework. We'll go through and we'll just quickly do the scoring and then we'll know where we're at as to how we're going to assess ourselves. Do you want comments um, while we're scoring or as to why we're scoring at the No, no, let's no. Do the scoring. We're, okay. And then we'll go through each application and then you can speak to your scoring. Yes. Okay. okay. Just so we are on the same page, Bubbles, um, asking for a friend. How does that scoring work again? So, number one, yeah, if, one. If you definitely think that group yeah, and the person should be fully funded. Yeah. Number two means you think that group should get some form of funding, possibly not all of it. Number three is it's unlikely you'll fund, but you'll see how the wash up is at the end. Yep, gotcha. Okay. So we're just going to do it coldly then because it, oh, I've written down so many comments here. No, but we'll do it after. Or you, yep, yep, you can yep. bring your debate into the discussion. Yes, because okay. People agree on things. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So number one is pyramidal players. If I can just start with you, Jen, we've got okay. to go. Well, I've got them at a three. Two. Jen, one. Three. What was it, sir? Three. Three. Helena, if you could be doing something fabulous like adding those up for me so that when we come down, we'll know who's who. Okay. Uh, number two is for environmental trust. Yeah. Um, um, I've got that at a three. Kim? Two. Jane? Two. Don? Two. 
Number three, Cora Hughes Group. One. 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 Number four, Coldwell Community Health Trust. Three. Two. Two. Three. Number five, Strive Coromandel Trust, which is the information centre, as you're aware. Three. Two. Two. Three. Number six, the second application from the Coromandel Trust. Three. Three. One. Three. Number seven, the Coldwell Project. Three. 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 Number eight, friends of the farm and Millie O'Hay. Three. Two. Two. Three. Number nine, Barry Brickle K Uh two. 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 Number ten, the Coromandel RSA. Two. One. One. Two. Two. Number eleven, to Kuri Kopa Maori or Hanatoma. Uh, two. 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 Number 12, Colby Preschool. Um, three. One. One. Three. Number 13, Colby Junction Trust, which is the new trust that's replaced the Colby Social Services. Three. Three. Two. Three. Number 14, Coromandel Rugby Club. Oh, I didn't see this one. Um, uh, one, two, 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 one. Number 15, Order of St. John. So um, I'm going for three at this stage. Two, three, three. Number 16, the Coldwell Youth Sailing Academy. One, three, two, one. Number 17, Coromandel. Oh, sorry, yeah, Coromandel School of Mine. One. Two. One. One. Number 18, Coromandel Preschool. Two. 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 And number 19, the Upper Forest and Bird. Two. Session. Three. Two. Two. Oh. Oh, that's easy. So, that's easy, yeah. without <laughs> looking at all of that, what we get? Have you added all up, Helena? Oh, okay. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. It's like 9, 9, 4, 10, 10, 10, 12, 8. <laughs> 6. You're losing the race here. <laughs> <laughs> No, you should be able to catch me out on my maths. Seven, two, three, four, five, six, eight, two, six, nine. So, from your own scoring, what's going to tell us? It tells us that you're saying this one, yeah. number three, number 17. Number 14. 14 and 10. Maybe you should put a little tip. Just put, yeah. Just well, let's just start. Let's put the lowest score. Yeah. It helps me through our scoring system that you wish to fund them what they're asking for. Yep. Yep. Four. 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 Oh, yeah, 660. Let's make it 660. Let's not talk about um, $650. So I think, can we round it round it up? Yeah, that's pretty. Then, it's, then it makes it easier. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So then if you look down the board, your next one is this one. Sword of the Lions, number 17. Yeah. Yeah. That was what I asked before. Yeah, so Thousand sixty nine seventy seven. I think we did a lot, didn't we? Any movement on that? 
which is part of the Kim, what is not a good investment. Question number 16, so the mine. We are spent $1,079. Oh, we, we, we pretty much all gave it a one, did, did we? Oh, pretty yeah. much. So then you have got one, two, at a number six. So that is the Coromandel RSA and the Coromandel oh, yeah. Rugby Club. So let's deal with the RSA. So RSA, I had put that we make a contribution um, to the RSA, um, that, and that included, um, what number is that? Uh, number 10. Number 10. They're asking for three thousand eight hundred. Okay, yeah. So what I've written, um, the, the, I'd be what I my thing was. I gave it a two, and it was that um, that we gave a thousand dollars towards the RSA services and the Christmas lunch combined, because usually they're separated out. They have them as two separate things. The Christmas <coughs> the Christmas lunch has been going for some time. Um, but I, yeah, I think overall, out of their whole submission, because they've combined everything, that we could give them a thousand dollars. That was that was my rationale for giving them two. A two. Anyone else? I, I just noticed that um, we funded in previous years, and um, yeah, and, it, and it's grown quite substantially the amount they've requested this year. And I'll always support the RSA. Mm. Always, no two ways about that. But I don't know if we should be supporting them to the tune of three thousand seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Sort of tend to go with the can a little bit that it, um, it's a little higher than I'd like. So what did you what did you suggest, Jen? I was suggesting a thousand dollars that goes towards both of those things. And I mean I guess with things like the Christmas lunch, it'll be up to them, but um maybe they could ask for a, a gold coin donation or something to support them if it does need that. Um, but that, that's only me saying that. Right. What are you thinking, Kim? Oh, I'm thinking perhaps we could leave it at a thousand and then see where our funding gets to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go for that. Yeah. Good result. Yeah. 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 That's that idea. Good idea. Good idea. Yeah. 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 See what's that, Jennifer. I'd be not make that look like an eleven thousand. Oh right, and yet another number six was the Coronation Rugby Club. That wasn't for very much, was it? It was number 14. Yeah, 3,981. We, I put that as a one, and um, but I was wondering about look because they've done so much, like it's a, a they've done so much that, and it really shows what they have done. You know, they've been working really hard. They're all they're just a group of volunteers. And um, what I think that we could, that, you know, a, a minimum of three thousand dollars, I think, would be a really good contribution. But if, if you know, we can see that within the scheme of things, if there's more, we could give them the whole lot. But um, I thought at least a, a three thousand dollar contribution. But that's just my what I I think. Any more conversation, discussion, suggestion? A uh, fairly strong club, and they are working well. It is very tidy down there, mm. um, so we definitely want them something to support them. Um, we could perhaps uh, three thousand. We could perhaps go to two of the stage and see what happens in the washer. Yeah, well, I was thinking of two and a half. And two and a half. I'll go two and a half. Two and a half. Do I hear more? Do I hear more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. See how we go with the wash up. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, so then you're moving to your number seven, of which you had one, which is the Coral Sailing Club. Oh, right. right. The Youth Sailing Academy. Right? Yeah. I mean, the reason I put that as a one, because I, I know um, through being in Coral what they do, and they work in really well with the community, um, they work in with the school. And community and people from Coromandel come up. The kids from Coromandel come up as well, um, so they try and involve all the the youth, of, you know, from as far down to Manaya even. Everybody is welcome. It's what they're currently using as a putter putt putt thing that is really it's it doesn't it's not fit for purpose. Um, and um, and and they their co putter is about safety, water safety. And teaching the kids there, and they use the Colville School swimming pool to do, um, you know, safety 
lessons and etc. But when they go out in there, they out in the boat. The boat is the guide boat, or no, what is it, the pilot boat, or the, no, the one that goes out. Yeah, the, safe. That's the one. Safe. That's what it's called. Yeah. So it's quite important. Yeah. But, so yeah. That, that's. I didn't know anything about the goal where you sat in the academy until I talked to Jan and she told me pretty much what she's just told you. We're not putting a lot of money up to call what's called or it does not like mm. work project and I have no problems in supporting the community with this particular project, especially if they come down and encompass Coromandel and Limonite kids. Um, they do. They're all they welcome. Working with the youth group. So, so I've got no problems at all in supporting them. We're not putting much up there. $3,000 is, yeah. Everyone else? Anybody else got a comment? Discussion? I did wonder how many members they had. I've got a lot of members. Yeah, but it's not noted anywhere. Oh. That okay. I can read. Right, okay. Because I thought it's... that would have been a priority to, to let us know. Okay. How many people they actually have. Right, so it's, it's all the kids from school. Okay. And, and others. Well, it's scored quite a high length of you all. Do you want to just propose an amount to start with? What will they ask you for? Three thousand dollars. Three. I'm, I'm happy. Six and a half. Sorry, what was that? So the vote now cost us six and a half. <laughs> We're asking for. I, I'd just give them three at this stage. I'd give them a lot. No. Mm. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Seven, eight. They've got one, two, three. Four eight, so let's just start at the start. The Barry Brickle Clay Day, which is number nine. Well, I mean, I, I did give that a two because I thought about some partial funding there. Um, but maybe uh, the, the partial funding that we could contribute would be to the um, consent, meet the consent costs of the event. Okay, it's been going year after year and, and going well. And I'm just wondering if it's one of the sort of projects that people could contribute to, the participants, part, you know, yep. contribute to, rather than our ratepayers having to pay for for that. It's very well advertised. It's out there. Lots of people come. Um, it should be sustainable by now because we've been um, supporting it for the last three years. Um, and it's great. It's a really neat thing, but maybe that could be our contribution as to um, meet the consent, the, you know, the board meet the consent of the event, the cost of the yeah. Yeah, consent, yeah, yeah. Um, and that would be our contribution. But that's my opinion, just putting that forward. But what do, do other people think? Yeah, I, I do hear I do concerns, Jan, about how it becomes an ongoing thing or becomes a, uh, an expectation, like a crutch almost, to carry these things on, and that shouldn't or shouldn't be the case mm -hmm. to the uh, detriment of other applicants. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah, know, I support you with that. We would contribute towards the cost of the event. Consent. So, what kind of amount were you wanting to? Well, well I, I'm not. I don't know what the consents are, but it's just that we take that um, the board could contribute to whatever the consent costs are, because I see that's one of the things that they're Double. applying for. 150 dollars would be ample. Well, we think to hire the reserve and do the bits. It's in their application, actually. I think it's something like 60 something dollars. Yes, I um, think it was something. Uh, like, yeah. In the reading through the application, which. You know, that's a support as to to sixty dollars for the consent fee. Yeah. So do we put do that down? Sixty dollars. Give them something to help with their events advertising and whatnot, or you just want to do oh. that for sixty? I'd be up to you. I'd go. I'd go. Yeah, help them out a little bit. One hundred and fifty bottles, and they send the signal with. Yeah. That's what I would see. Okay, so that's the consent and, and um, event advertising. Yep. You got that, Anthony? Yep. So, so then we go up to the Kuru Kaupapa Māori and Hadatanga in Kennedy Bay. Yep. Number eight. That's number eleven. Um, what did I think about that? Oh, I felt um, like it's an excellent. Um, this is the one at Kennedy Bay. Yeah, an ex excellent project. 
um, and that we could contribute an amount towards the, the storage shed. Um, this is a, a something that's happening in all the schools, mm. and um, most of the schools have probably got some sort of um, shed or whatever that they have, whereas they haven't at that um, I mean, I, I thought maybe we could contribute at least a 5k to that to that particular one. It's a fantastic project. And, um, and it's, it's around schools around New Zealand, and um, and it's great that it's so big in, in Kennedy Bay. And, yeah. Yeah, and I see this the same as Coldwoods, um, Kennedy Bay. Don't, they don't get a lot. They don't get a lot. No, no, like they Coldwood, don't. They don't get a lot of the, the outlying areas. It's nice to be able to give, and I'd support $5,000 as being a sort of a simple mm. group um, contribution towards that. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, and then you've got the next one, which is the Colville Press store. Colville Press Store number twelve. I thought it was more of a working bit. Was that the one? Yes. Yeah. That's that's what I've got. Um, it's it's. I, I feel it's not our, uh, the board's response or the ratepayers' responsibility to pay for an organisation to be compliant. And so um, it's a sort of thing that um, if it happened at any school um, it, 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 and it's sent up to, up to the school or whatever, and this is part of the, the preschool's part of the ministry, you know, to be compliant, then... Um, and I feel it's up to the families and up to um, the, the users of it. And, you know, Colbert is really, you know, they have working bees. Everybody builds up, grandmas, grandpas, you know, the whole works turn up to working bees there. There's a lot of kids at the preschool at the moment. And um, so I think that's my feeling, but that's my own feeling. Yeah. Mm, that's why I gave it a three. Anybody got a differing opinion? Yep. Well, I gave him one because I just um, believe it's supporting our kids. Because I gave him a one as well. I thought of it as a safety thing. Yeah. Um, for yeah, your kids. Right. Mm. But listening to other people's um, ideas about, you know, whether we should be supporting or not whether it's somebody else's responsibility or not. Um, I think maybe we should give some. <coughs> Have you got an amount that you're suggesting that the board could consider, Kim? Um, but just then reading it again, um, they're asking for the labour costs, not yeah. for the material costs. Yeah, the, where's your work what, be? Yeah. yeah. That, that's why I had Sorry, if it be. was for the materials, I would probably be yeah. way more um, happy to, to give mm. money. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm going to change mine to a three, I'm afraid. Good on you. Yeah. Open to... Uh, yeah, so. and Jean, you gave it a vote as well. We need to take that into account. Yeah. Oh, I'm just a strong believer in supporting children. Yeah. And, you know, Same. preschool especially. Mm -hmm. So uh, I hear what you're both saying mm -hmm. you know, about, um, you know, it's more labour costs. But somebody needs to lead it. Somebody needs to support or lead the charge in doing that labour part of it. Even if we give them half. Well, without without wanting to interfere in your job bubbles, but that has now become a 10 because of Tim's change in number so that you should consider the nines before you go to the to that one. Just see if Dan wishes to propose something and then you guys can decide whether you wish to support it. Okay, yep. So yep. I'm, I'm proposing to give them half. So that's a thousand and forty because yeah. they're asking. It is, yeah. And it's really up to the rest of you if you support it or not. Thank you. Um, or you can leave it and can we come, come back? back and come back to can it. we come back, back to it? Back. So if you just put a question so mark in there. Mark. Yeah. Okay. And number eight, Coromandel preschool. Oh, it's all the preschools. Yeah. Coromandel yeah. preschool. Number eighteen. Yeah. 
Um, I've given that a two, um, and I'm wondering if, because we have given them all a lot of this stuff in the past, we have given them upgrade. It is a business, um, and it's like they get money, they get paid for the job that they do, etc. And it's it's not about not supporting. So the thing that I do support is um, maybe um, some money towards the learning equipment for the tamariki um, there. And I I'd written down about five I'd written down five hundred dollars as a contribution towards the learning. And can we be specific about what yes, we can? can that's your money, you can say. Um, yeah, I mean, that, as I say, that's, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, Anybody else got some comments on a $500 towards learning equipment? Yeah, we, we turned it down every other year, haven't we? Uh, yes, we have. Um, and it's kids learning equipment. They oh. have received in the past a couple of grants from people, but prior to those two years that are listed. Oh, they have. Yes, they, yes, they have. Hey, just for learning equipment, though, even to help yeah, kids get smart that, either, that's but it's specifically for learning equipment. Yes, I support that. Yeah, because so so the other is sort of 500? Yeah, put 500. Yeah. Nice. Right, so that's number eight. So you're going to your number nines. Coromini players, number one. Okay. Um, I said three for them um, because the reason I said this three is because I know that creative communities are um, up for their grants. They're calling for applications. They close on the 5th of October. Yeah. have got three weeks. They have. And, um, and I know that for this particular play, it was, you know, as I've said, it's about um, Peter. Um, John, who's passed away, and they want to do his put his play on. Um, but I, I think it would have a really good chance with um, creative communities, um, rather than once again the rate payers having to support that. And it would be on a recommendation, I guess, rather than a complete turn down. Oh. oh, okay. So what you're saying is, rather than the board funding it, you will recommend this application to the creative community scheme. Yep. And yep. If, this, if that's applicable. Yep. I mean, other yep. people yep. need to need to. Is that what we want to do, Jean? Yep. That's I'll just we're going to have a uh, we're, we're well under budget. I'll just doing a quick go. And I'll just just remind us that we've got a public excluded coming up. Oh, yeah, we have to. Uh, yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah. So I'll break here recommendation to the CCS. Yeah. And you yeah. can always review that. Yeah. So number two is the spirit of Coromandel Trust. That's your next one, considering. Yeah. Um, I just just want to say about. Well, sorry, I keep in, I keep. No, in no, I so number three, I've given, I gave that a three for the simple reason is. That, I mean, you know, as we, the board, um, Coromandel has been very, uh, has contributed a huge amount. Like we've contributed 300k to uh, towards developing that, and our parks and reserve continue to contribute through the work that they do um, on with that trust. So it's ongoing. Our contribution is ongoing. Our ratepayers are. It's it is ongoing. So, um, so our ratepayers have already given that 300k recently to it, and um, and we've given them money in the past to to do various things. So that's why I gave it a three. Um, that was my reason. Mm. Oh, Jan's yeah, right. We've actually. We've actually contributed really heavily. I mean, it's a very worthwhile cause. It's one that Keith Stevenson was yeah. heavily involved in, and, and, and you do want to give them something, but uh, they haven't really received uh, a fair bit, and maybe we should see what we've got left over and uh, and try and fund other groups. Yeah. Cool. Let's just put a question up there, mate. Yep. And come all the way around to the upper Coromandel Forest and... Um, Number um, I've sort of been involved with that program uh, with supporting them and it's through the community board that I have been supporting them 
and um, and I've seen and I've been I've visited and uh, been to the site, and it's just looking amazing, and it's making such a a, a difference um, in Torahina Bay, and and I was and I gave it a two because I'm recommending that we. Give them at least half, which I was thinking about fifteen hundred dollars um, in support in, to support the amazing work that they've already started and are continuing to do ongoing, all volunteer work. And this is the final stage, isn't it? It is. Stage yeah. The final stage. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and they've been very good in enrolling the schools, um, and schools have been involved, etc. So. Um, you know, uh, lots of people have been involved in this project. Huge amount of um, work done by Forest and Bird regarding this. So, I'm, I'm so Jan's proposing 1500. Does anyone else have any comments or alternate suggestions? Well, I gave them too, and hoping that they would get something out of it. So, I'll go along with Jan, giving them half. Yep, happy to school. Mm -hmm. I will too. We're at a team. Right, we're getting there. It looks like it's just <laughs> a bunch of teams now. It's going to be called Health Trust. Okay, so I the reason I gave that a three was um, this is a business once again. It is a business they do it, and it's amazing. It's amazing what the Health Trust does. But we have supported them in the past with equipment, etc. Um, even such things as they've got listed here that, that we have supported them in um, purchasing. It's although a few people from uh, it's people from Coromandel Town. Um, go there in Kennedy Bay and the people from Colville, but at, at the end of the day, it is business and this is, these are normal business costs. I'm wondering about the, you know, like, does Dr. Sandy, does Dr. Brian, does, you know, Te Korawai have a, 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 in, a in a community yep. funded, rate payer funded thing? We are almost not in it to, to fund businesses. But we've done it in the past. We've done them. They've given them the money in the past. Um, I guess. Well, for me, I, I, I've made that a three, and um, um, and that those, my reason is is that um, we have funded it, helped in the past, and um, I just think, yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, the budget is so tight. Um, you know, we've got a budget of twenty-five thousand, and there's sixty-two thousand and eight hundred. I think that's that's it's being applied for. Yeah. So, I agree with Jane. Yeah, yeah. it all shared. Yeah. Well, we discussion and put that through yeah. So number five, um, the first application of the Thrive for a Mental Trust. Okay. Well, Mm. I gave them two threes um, on that um, because of the contributions we've made in the past, like um, up to $20,000 through our community grants for various things. And we did give them the starting the startup for the ECM service that they're asking for. I can see that that might be something in the future that um, might it does need maybe continuous Things and maybe the grants process isn't the right the right um, forum or avenue <laughs> for that to be continued. Maybe it goes under. You know, some things that we pay for, yeah. we've done that the, the we've absorbed like the, um, the yeah yeah places like that um, services that maybe that's where yep. um, that comes in that rather than the grants. Okay. Yeah. And number six, right. application. And I'm purely doing yeah. that based on the numbers you've given me. So to me, that and the discussion you're having is yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So the, the, with the with the the um the other one, the Thrive one, I've got um, it's 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 capital cost or it's a business cost of the thing. And I'm just wondering if um that there's there's I know it's through the school through being in the school that we have leasing arrangements for the computers and they do all the servicing, all the upgrading and, you know, when you do for an upgrade, etc. 
it might be the way to go rather than to buy one and have it become obsolete in 12 months time or whatever. Um, but I could see it as an ongoing cost if, unless they, so that would be why a lease arrangement might work. I don't want to, it's their yeah. business, yeah. but I just feel once again, it's not a, a rate payer um, responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. But that's my personal opinion. They're very well funded. Yes, we are they were already funded. Yeah. Okay, then we go to Friends of Friends of Te Whanganui Ahe, mm -hmm. which is number eight. Yeah. Um, and although they're a group that are outside of your ward, um, they fund these programs for schools to be able to participate and they're wanting to do one for the Romanian area school, mm. just so you're clear. And, and, and I gave it a three and and I look at this a fantastic idea, but I once again I know through Colville School when we got our new swimming pool, like NZCT, the, the New Zealand Community Trust, is really supportive of anything sporting. So we got our new swimming pool and all the associated costs complete for Colville School when we needed to a new pool. And it's this is an ideal thing for exactly that. Because I know that Colville would love to be part of this, as would Haratonga probably love to be part of it. Manaya, you know, they all would. So to give it for just one school, yeah. then I think that school needs to be the one that's applying for it. And they are based in Fidianga. They have access to it um, over there anyway. This group does. So because there's um, there's three NZC Trust um, club charities in this town. There's only one over there, but they're all connected. Like uh, there's two or three, uh, two I think in, in Thames. And it's all connected now, so it's peninsula wide. So they can apply and say that they want to put it in Coromandel and it will be, and that's, that's the way to go with this. So, yeah. okay. So then we move to, we've got an 11 and a 12 left. Number 13, which is the Colton Junction Trust. Okay. I've put down, is it ratepayers' responsibility to rebrand? No. <laughs> that That is my thing. Like, they do wonderful things. They are absolutely amazing. But I don't... No, you know they need to en enrol community support and have a work be or whatever. I love it. But <laughs> I, I feel like you know, yes, we are supportive, but um, it's not something that um, really fits our criteria to be rebranding. Yeah. We'll yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And come back over here to the Colton project, got, which is got Saint John's number fifteen. Oh, have I missed one? Oh, sorry. Number 15, Order of St. John. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. This is a tricky one, isn't it? Oh, yeah. um, but I've given that a three because what they're wanting it for is to install audio visual equipment for meetings and training in the Coromandel station. Now, I know from being in St. John's that um, there is See, there's already in our community, there's services are provided around, um, like Kilt provides services where people can go and do training and, and, and connect it, right? Yep. So there's already community, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, are you talking about in terms of the video conferencing? Yes, that's the video, video conferencing. I have got that written yep. down here. Yes, a couple of trusts and environmental. There is. Here. Other yeah, things. and I, I love the, like their application was really good. It's a really good application and it talks about if they, if, how it will enhance the users of the, the rooms. Um, you know, that, that this will be provided for the rooms, but there's, um, yeah, it, it's, I just feel once again that and also St. John's need to be providing this. Absolutely. They've devolved services that, so they're central and fitty now. 
And um, so it means that their training does have to be, when they do have their training, it does need that. Well, then St John's need to respond to that. They are the ones that devolve the services. Not to put them down, they do a fantastic job. It's absolutely amazing. But they have devolved those services, which means we now only have volunteers here, first responders. We don't have paid staff here anymore. So that's why there's the need for this equipment, et cetera. But blind. Oh. Um, no, just keep moving gently. Is this the last one? Yep. Number seven, the Colvin Creek. Oh. All right, that's up the top. Number oh. I gave it a three simply because um, the Coal project is absolutely amazing. I've done it, now. but it's. Um, I think that they can repurpose their current signage. They've got a lot of signage up there um, already. There is some. You see it on the side of the road, and um, um, yeah, I think um, given. Once again, the budget constraints, the amount of money we have got to spend, that that's something that they can, once again, that's that community thing um, in supporting this community, supporting their project. It's not to say we don't, because we have supported them Absolutely. In, in, all the way through. Um, but for something like um, this is is really up to them. There's a, there is an information um, notice board which is opposite, which is on the side of the hall, which we we gave money to to upgrade okay. and make it um, safe. It's lockable, and um, so they could that could be used because it's very underutilised at the moment. So, but I think that's mine. Well, the score kind of reflects that your members are thinking the same thing, but I'll just check. Yeah, correct. Right, so now what we need to do is I understand that amounts to the same thing. Excuse me, is that correct? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So what we'll do Any more is we'll go back this? to the ones Orders. that you put a question mark by. You know you've got this much left. Consider whether you want to give some towards those ones, and then you can consider your other last one that will be done in public. Yeah, public excluded. excluded. Yes. Yep. So that one is a nine and oh, this one will be up to a ten. So let's consider this one first. If you want to they want to brief them about, didn't they? Yeah, they want they want so to they want ten thousand dollars. Well, because it was a question mark and we have got some little bit of money left over, I'd, I'd go a thousand. Let's see how we go from there. Because it could be that we want to increase some of the other amounts yeah, as yeah, well. Correct. So I do you think we support yeah, this for the turn of the Was a thousand too much because it was a it is a nine. Uh, yeah. What do you what do you think, guys? Uh, yeah. I think a thousand. Thousand's okay. I think this one. Yeah. yeah. And that way, uh, we acknowledge uh, the little little way. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And now it's this one, which is the Cold Preschool. Okay, Jean actually um, supported that uh, for safety reasons. So this piece is on, and you wanted a thousand dollars, didn't you, Jean? I'll give them a thousand dollars. That's Jean's. Um, Jean saw a need for it, so yeah. You guys, I okay with that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm loving the round figures because I can just yeah. Yeah. Trying to make a simple bubble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can can we leave it at that then, and maybe excluded. go into public excluded, and then we'll see after that, we, you know, what what we're going to do. Um, so you'll need to pass that resolution. Yes, right. You know, I've got it written down exactly what I have to say. No, I haven't. <laughs> But anyway, um, so I know I am, but I can't find it in my little book where I thought I. Oh, this was so just, um, yeah. I'll just move it. Mm -hmm. Keep it um, we request, no, we don't. We want to move into 
What did we say? We did say that we we're going to move into public. We're, we're, okay. we're going to move into public. But you will need a mover and a seconder to do that. Done. Yep. Thank you. All those in favour? Aye. So just before we speak, we need to stop recording. But, um, we went into public excluded to consider an application, and due to privacy reasons, um, we we is why we went into public exclusion. And um, from that, we um, the amount of three thousand five hundred dollars will be contributed to the application. To that application. Hey. <laughs> So this is what it looks like. It's oh, what you decided. Mm -hmm. You have an amount up here. I just um, need to move that we um, come oh, back no. that the public be readmitted. Yeah, I'll move, move that we it. open uh, that we readmit the public. Oh, Bubbles, can you open the door? Thank you. Thank you. Thank Let you. the public back in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there's some that we under uh, there's some that we under fund or cut down on and said that if we had the money we would consider um, giving more maybe. Um, can we remember which ones they were? That's fine. Just just do it. Oh. Um, Okay, of the ones that you funded. Did we, but maybe the very, or what about the RSA? The RSA, yeah. we give a bit more, we give a, what, what does everybody think that the RSA? I think the a, RSA is an organisation that's worthwhile of supporting. Yeah. If we can now afford the I agree. Yep. $1,000, I think 1500 is written up there by our board secretary, it's just awesome. Yeah. So we won't ask you to do the maths now, but should we do another one that's got 500 on it? Then you're doing our maths. Helena is doing our maths. Oh. Helena, what is that figure now with $500 taken away? It'll be 3620. Three, mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you also. The clay day? Was it? No. Um, so you didn't fully fund the upper forest, you right. didn't fully fund the Coromandel Preschool, um, you didn't fully fund that, you did fully fund that. Um, the Coromandel Rugby Club, right. you did want to go back and hit a little read yeah. for a few minutes time. Yeah, because um, I, I remember that I thought we could contribute um, at least 3,000 to that. And they did us for 391. Mm. We had increased that $5,000, guys. Yeah, what? Yeah. To five thousand dollars to three thousand dollars. The rugby club. Two. No. Yep. Okay. So that was an increase of how What was an increase? What did we have? Two thousand. We had two thousand, oh. so now it's three thousand. No, you need two and a half. We had two and a half, didn't we? Yeah. Two and a half. Yeah. Oh, we increased it by five hundred. Yeah. So now you've got three one two only. Okay. Um, so you're going up, so that was that one. Um, so there's the, the what, what about, there's what about the very brittle clay day? Maybe mm. we'd be better or generous than 150. I think we could be. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's a good community yeah, place. So it is. is. Yeah. Okay, and we now have a little bit of money, so yes. I I honestly think that we should do the rugby club two row. Okay, go back in there. What is it? Two six two zero. Oh, thanks, Daniel. You're the only one helping me. Um, Kim wants. Kim, Kim wants to. Um, Kim wants. Please do I have to be full amount? I think we should. That's cool. fine. Yep. And what is the full amount, please? It is. Three thousand nine hundred and eighty-one ninety-four. Let's make it three thousand nine hundred and make it four thousand. Going once, going twice. Four thousand. Um. So I'd already accounted for the extra five. That's a thousand. So now it's another thousand I have to take all day. Just, just um, 
just want to pause and just check Helena's update because Helena's got a spreadsheet that everything is oh, this, this formula. Not that I don't trust that. I actually need to follow mine, Helena. <laughs> <laughs> Let's submit. Oh, so we had, um, what about I read them out and you just check you've got them right? Thanks. Right at the start. Thank you. Coromandel players, the board's going to recommend to re-add communities. Number two, Spirit of Coromandel, $1,000. Yeah. Number three, 660 the youth group. Um, declined, number four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, that's uh, the last one being the Coral Project Trust. No, the last one being the Friends of Te Whanga Nui. Oh, Nui. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So numbers four, five, six, seven, and eight have been declined. Correct. Correct. So then number nine, Barry Brickle, Doom Day, Play Day now, $500. Yeah. Chromium RSA, $1,500. Mm -hmm. Got a code of Ramadi or had a timer, $5,000. Coldwell Preschool, $1,000. Yeah. Coldwell Junction Trust, number 13, declined. Correct. Chromium Rugby Club, $4,000. Yeah. Order of St. John declined. Yeah. Coldwell Youth Academy, 3,000. Yeah. Coromandel School of Mines, 1,070. Yeah. Coromandel Preschool, $500. Yeah. Upper Forest and Bird, 1,500. <coughs> and the public excluded item, three and a half. Yeah. What's our total? Yeah. Leaving. Okay. 17, 17. That's left over, Helena. Right. You gave it. It was wrong. No. Anyway, um, did you take off the three and a half for the. Yeah. Did What about um, the bikes place that we've given them 5,000? That was remaining. No, no. no. That's, no. Uh, so what's remaining, Helena? Right that's what's left. Is one thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, not seventeen. <laughs> oh, so this is what you've got left. Yes. 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 What's the next number? Seven. 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 Oh. No. Yep. All right, team. <laughs> like that, we're doing it on the whiteboard. <laughs> okay, so. Okay. What do you want to do? Is there anything here in any way Well, you all gave this one twos. You only gave them that. Yeah. Do you want to just up it a little bit? Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. What nice idea. What, what about if you give them um, $770? Yeah. <laughs> add it to it. Okay. So that's $1,270. $1,270. What were they after? They were, they were after $2,000. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So are you saying from adding the 770 to that? Yes. Oh, no, that's only mine. That's what I think. What, yeah. what do others think? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, $500 would only buy nothing for you. So is my max right? Yeah. 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 Correct. It leaves us with a thousand dollars. And you've got one thousand dollars left to do something with. Just look at your numbers that you gave me. I know that's what we're doing. Yeah. Because that really is the fairest assessment. What about um, the bike? Yeah, the bikes. The bike one. The, the bike shed. Had a tongue of. Um, yep, give them like the you want to add that one to yep. 5,000. Yep. Yeah, but what about 6,000? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that, that's done. 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 <laughs> nice work. Thank you for doing your hard work. Thank you for your yeah. guidance, Bob. Yeah. Yes. So can we have a mover in a second, please? Right, okay. Would well, somebody like to. And I'll move then. I'll move that um, we accept the Coromandel Coldwell Community Community Board grants. Um, and the twenty-five thousand that we've actually used up the twenty-five thousand dollars in our grants. So I'll move that. I'll second it. Thank Thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Okay. Harry, thank you very much. That is a fantastic piece of work, everybody. That's us. That's brilliant.
and just what the pros yeah. are. Right. Now um, I'm going to close the meeting, the final meeting of the Coromandel Coldwell Community Board. Board. Thank you very much.